look out! <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to TriStar Digging. I appreciate you joining us today. We've got a little different job today than I've done before. Uh, this basement is going to be using superior concrete walls, which is a preformed uh, concrete wall that they'll haul in and tractor trailers. They'll have a crane here to set the walls. What I've got to do is there's about 33 ton of rock here. I've got to get this black pipe secured against the wall. Got to couple it up up there in the middle, put it together, and then kind of staple it down through there so it'll stay in place. I've got to have at least four feet of compacted stone from the wall of the basement out into here that that preformed concrete wall was set on. This is a, uh, what we call, or what the quarry calls 89s, washed 89s. That's a clean 3 8 inch stone. And the skid steer bucket is 72 inches. So that's what I'm gonna do uh, is put a bucket wide through here and it's gotta be eight inches deep. Uh, and then I've got to bring the uh, packer in here and get that packed down. Now what I'm gonna do in the middle is once I get this stone in here, is I'm just gonna tailgate rock through the middle section and then I'll smooth that out and pack that in with a skid steer. I didn't video this last week, but I built this little crane pad real quick. Uh, if I remember that, the 40 by 40 pad, so they'll bring the crane in off the road, park the crane right here. The transfer trucks will be parked somewhere right in there. And then he'll reach and get those walls and set those in as they go. And then what else I've got to do is get a driveway put in here. And we're going to tie that driveway in about where that tree is and bring it down through here and tie it into this, this pad area right here. All right, here we are at the street where I'm going to be putting in the entranceway. And I've got this mark for 30 foot wide. So it'll run from that white mark right there up to, well, where that yellow paint is on the road. I had 811 call before you did come and uh, take a look at this and mark the utilities. So this yellow is indicating that there's no gas line. It's okay. And uh, there's an orange line painted down through there. I know that's a telephone line. And then overhead, uh, we've got the cable line and two power lines going above. What's interesting is that they have a blue line marked down th through here, which would indicate a water line. But uh, something's not right about that because I know the water line is over here. A few years ago, I put this uh, culvert in for the neighbors. And as I was putting that culvert in, they had the water line marked over here but I found it over here as a two inch line and I was scooting right along the top of it and didn't even realize it until I looked down and saw it. I'm still gonna be careful over here uh, with that blue line there. I, 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 unknown to me why that's there, but anyway. All right, well that's the job for the next uh, couple of days I suppose, so let's get started on it. All right, I got that pipe in now, got that staple down to where it won't move. And what's interesting about these walls is that wall is gonna set on this uh, 3 8 inch rock. It's gonna be compacted in there and then that wall is just gonna set on top of that. There's no foundation or footing or anything for that. So let's get this rock in here now and get that smoothed out and get it on grade and we'll get that packed in. I am glad to be doing this job today. Man, I've been uh, hauling dirt for the last couple days, two and a half days actually, I guess. I had uh, 14 loads of dirt to haul and it was about a two hour, almost a two hour turnaround between loads. And I'm telling you right now, I am tired of running in that dump truck. I'm glad to be moving some rock or dirt or something today. We got the laser spinning now, and now we got a tone. I'm just using anywhere on this basement floor because it's level to set my benchmark, and I want to go uh, eight inches of rock above that. 
that's a half inch high half inch low one inch low that gives me a good idea now on the base level what it needs to be and so i'll start taking the rest of this rock and working it down through there over that way and on that side I went and got the plate compactor because I need to do a test. I need to get this down to uh, 10 inches like I talked about and then run the plate compactor over it and see how much this actually compacts. That way I'm not guessing that that's going to work when I get all this done and then either have to come back and take more rock out or, take, or add rock to it. So I just need to do a little test here first and see uh, what it's actually going to do. Now then, I got this little square right here behind the compactor uh, level, and that's uh, 10 inches higher than the floor of the basement. We'll see uh, how this compacts, and then it'll give me an idea how to do the rest of it. the packer now I realized that uh, that only settled like a quarter to half an inch overall and uh, that wasn't too bad as far as compaction goes and now I realize that uh, putting 10 inches of rock in there above the basement floor is way too much rock they're only calling for eight inches of compacted stone to set those walls on uh, 10 inches would be fine but it's just overkill just too much rock uh, to have to spend money on now then, uh, I'm going to grade some of that off and get that down to where it's supposed to be. And then we'll continue working out this uh, pipe right here till we get it uh, eight inches. And then we'll do the same thing over there. Got a helicopter coming over. That's a military helicopter, actually. update now where i am i think where i stopped was right in there so i've been working my way down through here to where the packer is now all that's on grade and i just got to make sure that i'm four feet off of that wall and compacted eight inches deep for them to set those walls on what i'm going to do when i get all that done is come back in here and, and tailgate some rock in here then i'll take the skid steer in here and dress that up and walk that in get that packed in but this is the crucial part over here. So I'm just working my way down through here and going one bucket wide is eating a lot of my rock up that I've got to get this part done with. So I backed off that idea and what I've done now started coming in here to the side and feathering it in there, dumping it in there. And then I'll come back through there, do that a little bit more and then grade that out with the rake and get that on grade and, and uh, pack that in too. So it's going pretty good for now. Uh, I'll put you up on a little time lapse for this part remainder going down through there. I got, took the skid steer and kind of back dragged that. So a little bit of raking and some grade work right here and we should be down to, I haven't said this yet, I don't think, but I've only got to go to uh, where I painted this orange mark because that is 56 feet from that uh, wall up there. The house is 50 feet wide. They'll come off two feet, put a wall and uh, they just want to make sure they got plenty of rock pad on the outside of this last wall. Uh, so that's what that mark is there. And then same thing on that side over there. Last I talked to you, I was working down this wall here and going to turn down the short wall and come down this other long wall. That is done now. 
I've got to run the packer over it yet and get all that packed in. But I still need two loads of rock. I knew that. I needed about 52 tons what I needed. So I'm going to go get two more loads of rock to fill in this area between. And then I got to close that in for that uh, end wall to go in there as well. And I have used the rake a whole lot more in this job than I really wanted to. <laughs> but I'm learning. And I did call just to make sure. I called the rep for this company to ask him what the grade tolerance was. Uh, you know, obviously they'll want it perfect. And that's why he said, you know, they'd like to have it as perfect as they could. But, uh, you know, this fine rock and packing that in, the, you know, it, it, it got rises and falls in that. So I'm a quarter to a half inch on grade all the way around. And he said, really, an inch is fine. I'm well within an inch. Let's go get some rock and come back and let's get this thing finished up. good i got it thicker up here in the front as i needed to and i will bring the skid steer and start working that back and then i'll get another load in the morning and uh put over there on the other side get that all filled in it might actually take a third one uh maybe not because that's not as much area over there to fill well i'll grab the skid steer and get this worked in and then uh i think i'll call it a day after that that rake has uh been a little rough on me today that took about four hours to do that first part getting all that on grade and uh uh, like a little bit, you know, getting it packed in, but it, uh, it wasn't all that bad. We'll get this worked in and then uh, see what happens. <laughs> Got that load somewhat spread out now so it's uh spread out to about where you saw me go across with the grade rod and then it kind of slopes down but i think one more load will fill that in i'm going to go look at a job this evening uh, so i think that's all i'm going to do today and i will see y'all in the morning all right well it's the next morning and uh we got a bright and early start i'm going to roll in here to the rock quarry get another load of 89s and get that back get it dumped and uh, get that one put in the basement there and spread that out and pack it in and we're moving on to the driveway Get to doing something that's a little more fun. <laughs> that, uh, I'd rather be digging than spreading that rock in there.
Well, that went pretty good. Uh, the only problem is, unfortunately, I'm about four tons shy of what I need. I still got to finish up this little end part right here, and I'm a little low in this area right here. With that said, now I'm going to have to go get some more rock, and but that'll be all right. I'm, there's going to be a concrete pad poured out through here at some point once the basement walls and everything are in place. It's not going to hurt to run and get another load, a full load, and uh, finish that up. Matter of fact, I'll probably just go ahead and bring it on out a few more feet and uh, just make sure we got plenty of room for the basement. Time for a little update now. I got the vibratory packer and I got all this packed in here now. Um, if you can see these little paint marks on the uh, basement floor here, that's where I check grade. Everything is within a quarter to half inch and all those little spots. Had a little high spot right there, worked that in and had another little high spot right here. So I worked that out as well. So now then they can pin this basement, put in the corners and they'll be ready to set those walls uh, come Tuesday. That's that, and uh, let's go dig this driveway out and get it ready okay, for I'm up here now at the top side of the house, and I have measured off only 15 feet from the edge of the house over here to the edge of the driveway, and I've got a orange line marked all the way up through there. And then I went 10 feet off of that, over and drew another line down to a point, and then I flared it out into the road. As you know uh, from a previous video, I just live uh, a couple hundred yards that way. So I ran home, got the mower, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mow this out so it'll be easier for me to see to dig it. So I've got the drone up in the air and uh, we will uh, mow this out and see what it looks like. Got the Mini X out here now, the Cat 304, and I'm ready to start digging this uh, driveway in. And I mentioned earlier in the video, uh, the markings for the utilities. Right here, they've got a communication line marked, and then uh, over here, the supposed water line, which I don't believe that. It's over there, I know. But anyway, I won't be digging nowhere near de deep enough to hit that water line if it was there. And then uh, there's, a little, there's a little ridge right there that I need to take off. The communication line being over here in, in the ditch line. Uh, makes that a little bit better to do that. I just want to get that knocked down level with the black top and then level with my rock gonna be over there. Let's dig this out. Good deal. You are just in time. You need something to put in that ditch? I do need something to put in that ditch. <laughs> How you doing, brother? Good. We'll just roll it off right here, yeah, I guess. It's, on, uh, it's a three on that side. If you want to pull in the field there, whatever. Perfect. All right. All right, our culvert showed up, and that is a good timing right there. So we're going to wheel that thing around there and get those unloaded, and uh, that's going to work perfect. I can get that dug out and lay those right in there. All right, Kenny's here and uh, he's getting those unstrapped. And when he unstraps that last one, I'm saying we're going to get some rollage. <laughs> we're gonna, probably going to roll off there. So we'll go on that side and uh, see that roll off. I tied it off with some rope. Oh, he did tie it off some rope there, so it may not. We'll watch him cut that rope and let it roll off, though. Oh, he's going to let me cut it. Watch this. 
<laughs> Look out. <laughs> Is that the way you do that, Kenny? That's the way we do it. <laughs> All right. Well, that's easy enough. I'd say Kenny's got a few more stops to make before he gets uh, done today. So uh, I appreciate him bringing these out and get this ready to go. Got that little ridge knocked off now like i wanted it what i'm going to do now is set up in the cleanest ditch out and then i'll be able to lay those culverts in there here in a little bit but uh, let's get this grass cleaned out of this ditch we go we got the uh, ditch dug out got the pipe in it and that's why i went with a 12 inch pipe instead of an 18. there is very little water that would ever get in this ditch and come down this pipe one reason i went with 12. the other reason i went with 12 is because of the shallowness of that ditch i didn't want to go any deeper than that because i don't know how deep that communication line is i just took the grass out and a little bit of the soft dirt out of the bottom of that ditch in order to get that pipe in there i'll get that cut off to uh, 10 foot connect that and when i get my rock i'll get this filled in but for now i'm going to start digging uh, out the driveway and basically all i'm going to do is just take off the grass in about uh, two or three maybe four inches of the topsoil and uh, get that down to some some bare dirt and then we'll uh, be able to put some rock on this GoPro's getting a little hot out there in the sun. I had to bring it in a little closer to the machine here, cool it off a little.
that's going to take care of the work for today. I'll be back on Monday to finish this driveway up. And uh, the guys were here this, just a little while ago and set up the corners in the uh, basement there for the walls that are coming on Tuesday. So I got a little bit of work to do on Monday. I've got this cut in now. You saw that getting the uh, culverts in there. And now then I got the driveway uh, cut in all the way to the house. You saw most of that on the drone. And that's looking pretty good. That's got to be dressed up just a little bit more. And then I'm going to get some rock on that. And it's going to look good. So I'll see y'all on Monday morning. Good Monday morning. I'm back on this little driveway job here to get this knocked out and uh, get this ready for the, uh, the uh, concrete walls that they're bringing in tomorrow. And what I've done uh, to get ready is I've, I've got my tile set up here where I want it, right in line with the grass edge of the driveway there. I went ahead uh, this morning early and went to the uh, rock quarry and picked up a load of, of Crusher Run that to, to put in here and pack down along this culvert here. And also uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add, that's a 20 foot stick of, of pipe there, and I'm gonna add 10 foot to it, which is right there where that little piece of pipe is and then connect that. And the way that I do that when I can is I'll bring the excavator over here and I'll put the uh, blade down and hold that pipe in place, get this cut, and then I'll reach out here with the bucket and I'll grab that end of that pipe and push them together. That's a pretty easy way to get those uh, put together without having to fight it. And after I get that pipe put together, I'll bring the uh, dump truck over here, dump the rock, get that in there and track that in real good. And then we'll start putting some uh, number fours, which would be an inch and a half rock as a base rock on this road right here. And this uh, end of the pipe has got a little plastic wrap on it to protect that rubber gasket where they slide together. And generally you want to put some uh, stuff on that and they make it to where you slap it on there and it slides together better. But with the excavator pulling it together, I am not worried about that. I want to show you this too uh, to know how far the pipes go together. Of course that rubber gasket you saw is just about right there. These pipes are marked and it says, if you can see it, it says home right there. And there's a line on this. When this touches this uh, inside that, that means that that pipe is all the way together. You know, it might help visually from a machine if this was a different, if it's a different color or something, but I know that's more work for them. But anyway, that's how you know those pipes are together.
the crusher run in there now and got that uh, packed in and made up real good with the pavement seam there. And now to give it a good base, there's a lot of fines in that and that will pack in really nice when I get some rain on it. That is some really nice crusher run for, for what I just used it for. I'm gonna go start hauling some rock to uh, put on this driveway, but I just saw that I've got some dirt build up in the bed and I need to get that out of there. That's, uh, I definitely don't want that to come out in my road uh, if the rock starts chewing it out. And plus your stuff doesn't slide out good. So let's get that out. Got that first load here, number four is an inch and a half rock and it crossed over where I compacted that uh, driveway entrance in. We had very little uh, compression there from the tires on the truck. That's nice, turned out really well. I'm pleased with that. Let's spread this load of rock and uh, go get another one. second load of rock spread now and what I'm gonna do is I've got a little bit of rock left in the uh, truck and then I've still got all this rock left here from the temporary entrance what I'm gonna do now is just jump in the skid steer level this out and get this moved out from edge to edge and see where I might need a little bit more rock and uh, then I can use what's in the dump truck and and then if I need to I can take that out and use it but I kind of want to leave that for now uh, until later on take it out just give a double entrance and there'll be a farther entrance up there but uh, we'll see, I may need that rock. Uh, let's get to uh, grading this out and see what it looks like. it in now and, and widened out to the edges of the grass got that where I want it that's gonna have to stay for now talk to the truck driver and the rep for the wall company uh, they may need that entrance to get in those transfer trucks to get in swing wide into there uh, they think this one will work but I will leave that for now what I'm gonna do with what's left of the rock that's on the truck I'm gonna back up right here to the edge of this tile and fill in that area right there it's a little bit low and and uh, pull that all the way over to that grass Get that done and then I'm gonna move all this dirt. I'll get all this dirt out of the way um, and take it over there where the rest of it is. Let's get that going.
time for an update and uh, the rock is finished and I finally got all the dirt moved. There was probably, I guess, four loads of that. I got it moved over to my topsoil pile. And this part of the job is done for now. I'll be back to do some more work at this project, backfilling around the house and uh, building another driveway, probably a retaining wall. A lot of work left to do on this job, but it's got it finished for now. They can bring their concrete walls in tomorrow and get those set. All I gotta do now is get all this machinery home. I gotta get the skid steer, the mini X, the dump truck, and my truck home, which home is just on the other side of those trees. But that means I've gotta walk back here three times. That'll be all right, old Diesel. He'll make the trips with me. Hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed the variety of the work that I did on this video. Uh, a lot of different things, and I like doing that on jobs, not doing the same thing every day. So God bless you, stick around for the message. Uh, you can tell from behind me here, there's been a few days past since I recorded the video and I'm actually doing the message for the video. So we'll take a look around right quick, show you the progress here on the house, and then uh, we'll get into the message. Uh, last time you saw this, it just had the uh, rock floor in it and uh, was ready for these foundation walls. And uh, now then they're in place. So the first thing that happened was they came and they set these, these preformed concrete walls. They set those with a crane. And the interesting part about that is uh, down at the bottom of that, there's a wire or, or a frame piece that folds down and rebar that was ran through that that when they poured the concrete floor, it tied the floor in with the system. So that's the inside, and this is a, a finished look right here. So they can attach any kind of wall that they want to to that. And it's also uh, got holes in it so they can run wiring through as well. Really neat system. Let's take a look at the back side of that, uh, what it looks like. So this is the back side of the wall, and I think they said that's a 5,000 PSI, or maybe a 6,000 PSI concrete, 100% waterproof. And I've already started the back filling, and uh, what I'm doing is putting a two inch rock in there called a number three. So that rock goes in here against the wall and against the dirt and uh, any water that comes up, tries to come up against the house will uh, hit that rock and go down and hit that uh, foundation drain that you saw me put in. Another part that I've been working on here is I've been taking this uh, red dirt from the basement and building a pad here. There's gonna be a carport right here and a porch that runs all the way across the back side of the house. There'll be a concrete pad poured on that and it'll be covered obviously with the roof that continues over. And uh, so that's gonna tie into the driveway as well. Let's take a look inside the house now. They got the framing finished today and they started putting the, uh, the uh, OSB on the side of the walls. And they got a pretty good bit of that done today. <coughs> All right, this is the inside. This part right here is the uh, living room and kitchen. And it's a two bedroom house and has a little office space. It uh, has two bathrooms, full baths, and a pantry area. I think this is the pantry area right here. Well, anyway, uh, that's the progress on the house so far, and uh, I'll probably be doing some more video on this at some point in the future on some more work that I'm doing. So stay tuned for that. Well, let's get into the message. All right, well, I appreciate you sticking around for the message, and what I wanna talk about in this message is about having a strong foundation. I talked about it when I was making this video, how important it was to get that rock pad done exactly right. You know, four foot out from the wall, it had to be really compacted and, and put in there really well and, and, and packed with that packer because these walls don't have a concrete foundation. These walls actually set on that pad and uh, that has to be right. It has to be compacted right. It has to be uh, level so that this foundation has a good place to set. You know, with a bad foundation, this house can still last a long time, but over time, there's gonna be cracks and problems in this house if the foundation is not right. So it's very important, very crucial that that be done. What I wanna talk about though is the foundation that we have in Jesus Christ, the foundation that we have in our faith and trust in Him. And in Matthew chapter seven, uh, it talks about several things. Uh, and I'm just gonna kinda summarize some of these things before I get to really the part of the message I wanna talk about. In, in the first part, it says, asking, seeking, and knocking. That's talking about that. Let me just read that part. It says, ask, it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives, and he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it'll be opened. So Jesus is talking about these, these different things here. And the next one will be about the narrow path and the broad path. And it says this, enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way. I wish I had time to spend on this one, which leads to life and there are few who find it. The next one talks about you will know them by their fruit. And the Bible is warning us, Jesus is warning us here that we should know the false prophets. We should know the false teachers by their fruit because it says, beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, 
but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So Jesus there is telling us that we ought to know false prophets and false teachers by what it is they're proclaiming and what it is they're teaching because they're not necessarily teaching on the foundation that is Jesus Christ. And then the next part I want to talk about is that the subtitle says, I never knew you. And this is the part, one of the most challenging passages of Scripture in all the Bible that I've read and studied. And it says this, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And Jesus will say to them, And then I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. You, you who practice lawlessness or those, you who practice wickedness because their foundation wasn't built on Jesus Christ. Their foundation was built on themselves and, and what they could accomplish or what they could do uh, by what they were saying. And they, they weren't trusting in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They were just using that as, as a vehicle, an avenue to get what they wanted and how they wanted to do that. Here's the part that I really want to talk about. And it's Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. And it says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house upon the rock. And listen to this. And the rains descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Meaning that that house was built on a strong foundation, the foundation of faith, that foundation is Jesus Christ. So now then, this house is built on a great foundation, and it's going to be here for a really long time because of the preparation that went into preparing that foundation for this house to sit on. Now listen to the rest of this. And then it says, But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them, important, hearing is one thing, doing is another. The Word is teaching us here that there are many people that hear the Word of God and say that they trust the Word of God, but they're not fulfilling, they're not being obedient to the Word of God. They're not living that out in their life. This is what this is talking about. It says, But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rains descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and listen, and it fell, and great was its fall. And what that's talking about there is is people who are hearing the Word of God and just not applying it to their lives. They claim to know Jesus Christ. They, they claim to, 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 to know God. But yet, I read to you just a minute ago that many people in the last day, in the day of judgment, they'll say, Lord, Lord, did I not do these things in your name? And Jesus will literally say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. So they're claiming to know Jesus, but never had a true, right relationship with Him. With the forgiveness of their sins, placing their faith and trust in Him, and repenting, that's crucial to understanding salvation is repentance, turning away from sin and turning to a life of obedience with Jesus Christ. I hope that you're a believer. I hope that you're trusting in Him today. If you haven't, that's the most important decision you'll ever make in your life is to turn your life over to Him, to trust Him, to have the forgiveness of your sins, repenting of your sins and turning to Him to have the eternal life. So God bless you and I appreciate you watching.